All right, now, is there anyone else who has questions about any instruments or the songs you heard today? Uh, pet me, pet, any, pet me. Anyone besides him? Yes, you right there. Uh, question, Mr. Instrument Guy. Uh, was the banjo named after Banjo-Kazooie on the N64? I'm sorry. Is the banjo named after Banjo? Was 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 the banjo named after Banjo Kazooie, the, the bear? A bear named Banjo. Sorry, could you repeat that? From from Banjo Kazooie. What came first? Uh, um. Next question. Anyone else? In the 90s, Banjo-Kazooie and Rare were two powerhouses that carried the N64 and even before that the Super Nintendo into greatness, even though PlayStation 1 was better this generation by sales. Hey, plumber boy, mustache man, your worst nightmare has arrived. But with that being said, if you had an N64, you definitely had a Rare game along with it. Whether that being Banjo, Diddy Kong Racing, GoldenEye, or others. For me, some of those games were the best I ever played as a kid. And still to this day, some of the best I've ever played. Banjo will also have a soft spot in my heart always for being one of my favorite mascots back in the day. Even still. Hell, Banjo's even in my room holding a controller as we speak. So, without further ado, let's get right into my review of Banjo Tui. Technically, it's my show. I can talk about whatever I want. So, we're going to go with Tui today. Ah, yes, Banjo Tui, the far superior game in the franchise. There's nothing wrong with Banjo Kazooie, but if you're looking at both of them and comparing and contrasting, obviously Banjo Tui is better because it had the first one to go off of and was in the hypothetical video game of and longer. Banjo Tui picks up right where Kazooie left off. Well, two years after beating Gratilda, that is. It's a dark night, and you and the returning characters are playing poker with Kazooie being shady as always. Then all of a sudden you hear an earthquake and feel a tremor. So Mumbo decides to go out and investigate. Turns out it's Grunty's two sisters trying to bring her back from the dead. Mind you, one sounds like Cartman from South Park. Screw you guys, I'm going home. <laughs> and with them reviving Grunty as a skeleton looking like something out of Evil Dead, it is now your job to stop her again. Especially since she blew up your house and bottles. Which is right where the gameplay picks up. You're back in the main world from the first game, and now your job is to go find her. Thankfully, you know some of the same moves you did from the first game. And after using some of those same moves from the first game to defeat Klungo, Grunty's right-hand man, you're now put into Isle O'Hags, which is now the new main hub world that you'll be using to travel to all the worlds in. And before we get into the new worlds, I just want to mention something that stuck out to me this time around playing through. Why is there an enemy in the bedroom of Bottle's house? That's it, just one enemy in his widowed wife's house. Something tells me their marriage is pretty rocky. I mean, the kids aren't even upset about it. They're just chilling, playing with their toys. You are not the father. Anyways, dysfunctional family aside, I digress. Some of the levels include starting off in the temple, which is like a Mayan temple. Then you go to the glittery mines. You have a circus named Witchy World, which is mostly witch stuff and futuristic things. Pretty unique world. Then you go to Jolly Rogers Bay, Pterodactyl Land, Grunty Industries, and a few others towards the end I don't want to spoil. The backtracking is also nice in this game where you can go back with new powers and abilities and unlock more collectibles and things. Speaking of collectibles, something that a collectathon platformer has, this one is no different. In Banjo 2, you have to collect the same thing as the previous game, Jiggies, which unlock new worlds. Then you have musical notes in each world that you have to collect. Jinjos, just like in the previous game as well. Pages for Cheeto's book which unlocks cheat codes of sorts to use throughout the game. Also throughout the world of Banjo-Tooie, you can find honeycomb pieces, which in exchange improve your life bar and give you more life. 
And then you have Globos, which help Mumbo on each level unlock his abilities, so you can go unlock more parts of the world. Something else you can unlock in this game are abilities for Banjo and Kazooie. There's more advanced moves than in the previous game. Something else you can unlock in this game, just like the previous, is new forms of Banjo and Kazooie. But this time, you don't go to Mumbo for them, you go to Humba Wumba. And she takes the same thing, she takes Globos, and in exchange will turn you into a specific new transformation per whatever world you're in. For example, you can turn yourself into a T-Rex in Pterodactyl Land, and on top of that you can be big or small. In Glittery Mines, you're a thing of TNT, which can help blow up obstacles and progress through the level. There's also more like turning into a submarine, a van, and a few other things I don't want to spoil. Another thing that really made me like this game as a kid was the fact that you had split screen. Now, for a platformer, that makes no sense. And it still doesn't because it has nothing to do with the main game itself, just the mini games that are involved in the game. There's so many mini games in this game that I'm only going to name a few. There's a first person shooter, which is in the main game and also split screen. There's kickball, where you play as Stoney trying to get all of the balls into your net as quickly as possible. There's Dodge Them in Witchy World, where you try to collect all of the gems before the time runs out while avoiding and dodging everyone else in the bumper cars. And keeping along with Witchy World, you also have Hurry Hoop, where you play as Kazooie, trying to run and jump through hoops, literally. Balloon Burst, which takes Banjo and Kazooie flying through the same area as Hurry Hoop, blowing up balloons with eggs and many more that you can also, like I mentioned before, play in split screen. It's reasons like this and many others why this game not only is a great sequel, but just a great game alone. This is one of those games that shaped my childhood, just like Luigi's Mansion where I would walk around with a vacuum on my back just to catch ghosts with my Game Boy Horror. I mean, I used to walk around the house with a backpack thinking I was Banjo and Kazooie. I mean, I even collected puzzle pieces when I did that because I thought I was actually playing the game. That explains a lot. Too much, actually. Oh boy. After Banjo-Tooie came out, Rare was eventually bought out by Xbox. Hey, get what you fucking deserve! Since then, we really haven't gotten a new Banjo sequel. No, 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 no. <clears throat> that does not count. That is not Banjo-3. I will not rest until I get Banjo-3. Xbox? I will hunt you down, and I...